You've seen how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide polynomial expressions. You've also seen how to graph polynomial functions. In this video, we'll look at how to solve a polynomial equation. Let's start with a polynomial function p of x. It has a number of algebraic terms. To solve a polynomial equation, simply find the values of x for which the polynomial equation is equal to zero. What does this look like with a function graph? It means the number of times the graph intersects the x-axis. In the context of polynomial equations, the x-intercepts are called the zeros of the function. Those zeros are used to find the solution to the equation. Let's start our investigation of polynomial equations with quadratic equations, or polynomials of degree 2. When solving quadratic polynomials, recall that there are three possibilities. The first is that the parabola doesn't intersect the x-axis, meaning that there is no solution. The second possibility is if the parabola intersects the x-axis at one point, meaning there is one solution. The third possibility is that the parabola intersects the x-axis at two points, for two solutions. But if you look at the equations of these polynomial functions without graphing, it's hard to tell if a particular equation has zero, one, or two solutions. You can use the quadratic formula to find the number of roots when a quadratic equation is written in standard form as shown here. But the discriminant, which is the part of the quadratic formula under the square root sign is the best way to determine the number of roots a quadratic has. This chart lists the number of quadratic solutions based on the value of the discriminant. Going back to the three types of quadratic equations, you can see how the discriminant is very helpful in identifying the number of solutions. So, if you are solving a quadratic equation, the first thing you should do, even before graphing it, is to calculate the discriminant. This simple calculation will tell you how many solutions the quadratic has. Let's continue our investigation of polynomial equations with cubic equations, or polynomials of degree 3. From our analysis of polynomial graphs, we know that cubics will intersect the x-axis at least once and at most three times. Because cubics have at least one solution, then a cubic equation can be factored as the product of a linear factor and a quadratic factor. If a cubic has only one root, then it can be factored as the product of a linear factor and a quadratic that has a discriminant less than zero. You can see on the graph, the quadratic behavior of the graph doesn't intersect the x-axis. If a cubic has two roots, then it can be factored as the product of a linear factor and a quadratic that has a discriminant of zero. You can see on the graph, the quadratic behavior of the graph intersects the x-axis once. If a cubic has three roots, then it can be factored as the product of a linear factor and a quadratic that has a discriminant greater than zero. You can see on the graph, the quadratic behavior of the graph intersects the x-axis twice. So, in solving polynomial equations of degree 3, start by graphing the quadratic function to identify the linear term. Then use synthetic division to find the quadratic term. Then use the discriminant on the quadratic term to see if there are additional factors. Now let's look at polynomial equations of degree 4, which are also called quartic equations. A quartic equation can have 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4 solutions based on the number of times the graph of the quartic intersects the x-axis. Here are the 5 different scenarios. Let's look at each one by one. Quartic equations whose corresponding graphs don't intersect the x-axis can't be factored as the product of lower degree polynomials. Zero solutions mean zero polynomial factors. Quartic equations whose corresponding graphs intersect the x-axis once can be factored into a linear term and a cubic. Since we know that a cubic must intersect the x-axis once, then the linear factor must be squared. Furthermore, the resulting quadratic must have a discriminant less than or equal to zero. Quartic equations whose corresponding graphs intersect the x-axis twice can be factored into two linear terms squared. Notice how this type of graph looks like two parabolas close to each other? The resulting factored form is the product of two linear factors squared. Quartic equations whose corresponding graphs intersect the x-axis three times can be factored into three linear terms, one of which is squared. 
Notice how this type of graph looks like two parabolas close to each other? The square term is where one of the parabolas intersects the x-axis ones. Quartic equations whose corresponding graphs intersect the x-axis four times can be factored into four linear terms. Notice how this type of graph looks like two parabolas close to each other? In this case each parabola crosses the x-axis twice. As you become comfortable factoring polynomials, look for opportunities to simplify higher degree polynomials. For example look at this polynomial, which has four solutions. Trying to factor a polynomial with terms to the fourth power can be a little intimidating. Here's a technique that can simplify the factoring. Replace the square term with a new variable that is linear. Substituting this new variable into the original equation results in a quadratic. Remember that for this type of quadratic the goal is to find the factors of 4 whose sum is also negative 5. The two factors are negative 1 and negative 4. Their product is positive 4 and their sum is negative 5. This means we can write P of V as the product of the two binomials shown. Solving the equation we get two separate one-step equations, where v equals 1 and v equals 4. But remember that v equals x squared. Now we solve for x, and we get that x equals 1 and x equals 2. This technique of substituting a linear variable for one with a higher power can sometimes simplify solving a polynomial equation. Solving polynomial equations involves some strategy. You should analyze the polynomial and use a combination of these strategies. Graphing Synthetic division Factoring When it comes to factoring, keep these tactics in mind. Polynomial identities Substituting with a lower degree variable In the case of quadratics, remember to use the discriminant to help identify how many solutions there are. Then use the quadratic formula to find those solutions. And keep in mind that even higher degree polynomials can include as part of the polynomial a quadratic factor. 